The Silentium PC Fera 5 is an affordable CPU cooler that has a promising future, that is, if it can deliver on that promise. The Fera 5 is a CPU cooler that is made to offer a good performance without any thrills, thus no added cost. This cooler is also made to disrupt the market when it comes to small and affordable CPU coolers. At the moment, the Silentium PC Fera 5 is available for around 27 US dollars. However, this CPU cooler is also available in a dual fan configuration called simply the Fera 5 Dual Fan, and that one should be available for around 32 US dollars. In this review, we have the simple Fera 5, and that's what we're going to base our opinion on. The Fera 5 is your typical small CPU cooler, until it's not. This cooler is what you get when you actually learn from someone else's mistakes, which is what smart people do. The design of the Fera 5 is good, it's simple yet not understated, and it will match even a high-end system, thanks to its usage of an all-black fan and a black cover on the top of the heatsink. Speaking of which, the heatsink of this CPU cooler is simple, very simple. It's a single tower with no less than 56 aluminum made cooling fins. That's a lot for such a small CPU cooler. These fins are angled downwards on the sides. This is a simple yet effective concept. What it does is not only creates a channel for the airflow, but it also greatly increases the structural integrity of the heatsink, as in essence each cooling fin supports the one on the top and the one on the bottom. Going back to the number of fins used, such a high number is not normally found in the wild, I mean in other cheap CPU coolers. A high number of fins provides a larger heat dissipation area but it's also more expensive to manufacture. The Fera 5 uses a single 120mm fan for its active cooling. This is a Silentium PC Flactus 120 and has a maximum speed of 1800 rpm and a minimum speed of 300 rpm. This fan also has no less than 9 impellers which have this curved design. This type of impeller shape is great for static pressure. Why? Because this angle of the impellers in general offers a pretty good coverage of the area inside the fan frame, hence more static pressure delivered by the fan inside the heatsink. Other features of this fan are rubber pads on the corners of the frame which will prevent the passage of vibrations into the structure of the heatsink and of course an all black cable that is not sleeved, but I can forgive that one because of the price of this CPU cooler. Another thing about this cable is that it has two connectors for powering multiple fans together. The base plate of the Fera 5 is smooth enough for what it is, because it has a direct heat pipe touch design which means that the base plate is made from actual heat pipes of the cooler. This type of base plate has been used since the Stone Age, and it works, however it is not as good as a solid copper made base plate. Why? Easy, because it's not as smooth as a solid base plate and thus you do not get the optimal surface contact on the CPU surface. Speaking of the heat pipes, the Fera 5 has 4 of them, and they are made from copper and are arranged in the classic U shape to facilitate the heat transfer. Thanks to their shape, the heat pipes are also an integral part of the structure of the heatsink, as they keep the cooling fins attached in their position. The heat pipe endings are not smooth at all, as is the case with many CPU coolers, but the Fera 5 has managed to avoid that design shortcoming by fitting a plastic plate over the top of the heatsink. Before we test the CPU cooler, you need to see what is included with it, and we have a user manual which covers both Intel and AMD platforms. Four fan clips, a single tube of thermal paste, a universal mounting bracket, an Intel backplate, four backplate nuts, four backplate nut clips, four standoffs, four LJ2000 standoffs, and four mounting bracket screws. The installation of this CPU cooler is very easy. You first get the backplate and then install the plastic clips in the correct spaces for your socket. However, there is one error here and homeboy here noticed it. While this user manual is great, it has one single flaw that needs to be addressed fast. On the very first page, you get two photos of the backplate and the plastic clips, but if you squint your eyes, you will also see how these two small photos also tell you to install these metal made threaded inserts into the backplate before you secure them in place with the plastic clips. And if you just look at the manual for the first time, you will miss this crucial step. 
for such an important part of the mounting system, to only have a mere mention of these threaded inserts is not good at all. I missed the part the first time I've looked at it and I was looking for things like this. So please take notice of this when you install the cooler. Moving on, with the threaded inserts installed and the clips attached, you install the backplate at the back of the motherboard. Then on the front, you screw in these standoffs. Afterwards, you place the universal bracket over these standoffs and secure it with these flat screws. Finally, you apply the thermal compound and install the heatsink over the universal bracket and then you line up these two spring leather screws and that's it. You also need to attach the fan to the heatsink, but that's pretty much the simplest thing to do in the universe. And with the Fera 5 installed, you can easily notice that this is not a bad looking CPU cooler. It's good. It's simple but good as I've said at the beginning of this review. That black plastic cover paired with the all black fan at the front really do bring out the aesthetic of the Fera 5. In terms of the clearance, thanks to its size, the cooler does not even reach the RAM slots of the motherboard, let alone interfere with them. So I'd say that the clearance for RAM is very good. In terms of graphics card clearance, the space between the sides of the heatsink and the backplate of the graphics card is approximately 28mm. However, don't just assume that it's going to be the case for you. Why? Because modern motherboards usually have a top mounted M.2 socket and that will change the distance between the CPU socket and the PCIe slots. So keep that in mind. Before we test the cooler and see how much it can cool, you will get to hear a noise sample of the cooler and its included fan, starting from a dead stop and increasing the speed until it reaches its maximum rated speed of 1800 rpm. I am doing this because an actual noise sample offers you a better idea of what to expect noise-wise from a CPU cooler. Sure, a decibel reading is useful, however, that does not take into consideration other noise sources such as bearing ticking or vibrations. And with its 120mm fan spinning at the maximum possible speed, the Fera 5 reached a maximum noise output of 42 decibels with the measuring device placed at a distance of 10cm away from the system and the CPU cooler. This value places the Fera 5 next to models such as the Noctua NH-U12A or the Pure Rock 2. Testing each CPU cooler is done using an Intel i9-9900K CPU which is running at both its factory frequency and settings, but it is also overclocked manually to 5GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burn Test benchmark. This benchmark is useful for one simple reason. It places a load onto the CPU that is similar with what you will encounter in your daily life. And in this test, the Silentium PC Fera 5 reached a maximum temperature of 72 degrees Celsius, with the i9 CPU overclocked to 5 GHz on all cores and with the ambient temperature at a fixed 26 degrees Celsius. This places the Fera 5 next to the Be Quiet Shadow Rock Slim or the Noctua NH-D9L. The next test is where each CPU cooler is pushed to its limit, some even over that, as this test uses the system stability benchmark found within the AIDA64 Extreme software. This benchmark provides a CPU load that is unrealistically high, in fact, the only CPU load that is close to severity to this benchmark is high quality video rendering with the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Silentium PC Fera 5 reached a maximum temperature of 91 degrees Celsius with the same 26 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. This places the Fera 5 next to coolers such as the Be Quiet Darrock 4 or the Shadow Rock Slim. The Silentium PC Fera 5 is a good performing and affordable CPU cooler that is a great alternative to the other CPU coolers found within this price range. There are only two drawbacks with this cooler. First, the base plate, which is a classic direct heat pipe touch base plate. It's a good enough system for this cooler, but I feel that a solid base plate would have worked much better because it would have been first of all straight and second made better contact. And second, the user manual needs a bit of a revision, not a complete overhaul, but at least make all the steps of the installation process look the same, as in be explained with the same structure instead of one step being just mentioned while another one being explained. The build quality is good, not on the same level as Noctua or Be Quiet, but still pretty good for this price range. 
The Silencium PC Thera 5 is a good little CPU cooler and it is affordable, it does what it says without any complications. Why create an offset design that increases the cost when you can just make the heatsink smaller but use more cooling things to get more heat dissipating surface? This type of critical thinking is a rare thing these days as everyone wants to look smarter than they are and look cooler, hence overly stylistic RGB systems and shapes that only add to the end user cost and not to the performance. The Fera 5 has nothing like that, it's a simple cooler that works thanks to tried and tested methods. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more, and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Star pages of this channel.